All right, what's up, my people? So I know, you know, 4124, right? When you look at it on its on its pure surface, it may look like, you know, Georgia wasn't really competitive. Scoreless in the second half, right? Things looked kind of ugly on the surface. It looked like, you know, this game, it was really close at half, right? Georgia goes into half with a lead uh, for the third time in a row against Alabama, only to squander that lead in the second half. I know there's a lot of, you know, people wanting to say that, Todd Munkin may have thrown, got past happy in the second half. You know, you're averaging almost five yards a carry. Why not just continue to run the football? Well, a lot of what you're doing as an offensive coordinator is responding to the flow of the game. And the flow of the game in the second half was that Alabama, if you didn't hold on to the ball, might, you know, damn well scored 50 points. So the flow of the game dictated that Georgia needed to score and score quickly. Uh, after that, you know, 90-yard touchdown pass to Jalen Waddle, um, you know, Georgia ran the ball three times the remainder of the football game. They were trying to score in bunches and score in explosive plays, and the best way to do that is to dial up shot plays, right, to dial up explosive plays through the pass game. Munkin did that, and he did it exceptionally well. The only problem was it wasn't executed. So a lot of people thought the offense looked pretty good in the first half. Defense looked sustainable. Second half, totally different story. So what we're going to do here this week on the Patreon account and teasing just a little bit over there for the folks on YouTube is we're going to split this in half. Now, the order in which we go, I don't know. We might go first half offense, first half defense, second half offense, second half defense, or we might go first half offense, second half offense, first half offense, first half or first half defense, second half defense. That's up to you guys as the viewer, however you want it. If you want me to go half by half, let me know if you want me to go, you know, group by group offense and defense. Let me know as well in the comments, whether that be on YouTube or the Patreon account. So that's up to you guys. However you want it, you know, most voted gets the win. So we'll do it that way. So we got a lot to go over. We're going to go play by play through this. This is the biggest game of the year in the regular season for both these football teams. So we got a bye week. We got nobody to look forward to in terms of, you know, what to look forward to, what we always do on Wednesday's show. Really no reason for a Q&A because we don't have a game coming up Saturday. Uh, I always say we. You guys get it. Georgia doesn't have a game coming up this Saturday. We don't have one to watch together. So with that being said, let's get right into it. We're going to go play by play starting in the first play of the game for Georgia on offense. Now, I like this. It, it was clear to me, and as you'll see throughout this first series, that Todd Munkin thought he, you know, he could get the ball out on the edge against this Alabama defense. I don't know what he saw on tape. Um, to me, I said maybe he saw a bunch of explosives by Ole Miss on the outside, but it's just an easy way to get the ball out on the edge, a nice pitch and catch for your quarterback, right? Sell the split, the heavy split zone action. They've been running this all year. This is a staple in pro-style offenses. Just get your tight end leveraged on the guy that's in man-to-man -man with him and pick up, boom, a quick, easy 10 yards after the first play of the game, Richard LeCount turning over Mac Jones. So easy pitch and catch, trying to get our quarterback incorporated into the play, and we ran this all week. So here's how this works for those who don't know. Offensive coordinators and offenses, for that matter, during the week, they've got what's called openers. They, they The whole first series, most offensive coordinators is scripted. Sometimes the whole first, you know, almost quarter – is scripted for these offensive coordinators. They know what they like. They know the sequence in which they like it. They dial it up in that order, the way they practice it all week. I guarantee you these first six, seven, eight plays have been ran over and over and over again this week. When they went through walkthroughs on Friday, when they got to Tuscaloosa, we used to do walkthroughs in college in the parking lot of the hotel. I highly doubt they're doing this. They're probably doing it in you know, some meeting room somewhere. They're going through walkthroughs. They're going through their openers. This is a nice, easy pitch and catch. Again, getting out on the edge, selling play fake, getting our nice quarterback or our quarterback nice and comfortable on his first road start. He doesn't stay comfortable. Let's just say it that way. But here's here's the coaching adjustment here. They get into bunch, right? What you're going to see from Alabama is if we can go back to the opening clip of it, Alabama's in cover three, right? One corner here is responsible for outside the hash. Deep safety is responsible for the middle of the field. This corner over here is responsible for this portion of the field. So what they're going to do is they're going to outside release Jermaine Burton, run him down the numbers 
to take Patrick Sertan with him, and that's going to open up a big void outside, uh, you know, the tackles down here on the bottom. So you'll see him press the corner, get outside of him, and then they're just going to slip Trey McKitty right into the open zone and make number three run with him when he's already out leveraged. Now, first play of the game, they got to the edge. Second play of the game, they do the same exact thing, I believe. Hold on. Actually, they motion to the one-on-one -on -one and the shot for George Pickens. Okay, I like this. Best player on your offense, you believe. Your biggest playmaker, though, it hadn't looked like that this season. Get him an easy touch. Get him involved in the football game early. Let him know that, hey, we're going to design plays for you to get the to get to at least try to get the football. This is a nice, easy way to get him. Now, they don't complete the pass, but that doesn't matter. Sometimes – Big, talented wide receivers, big talents like this like to know that early on they're in the play call. They're in the play or they're in the offensive game plan for the night, even if it's not completed. All right. Again, this is man to man cover one. They got one deep safety man up down here, man up down here, man up down here on the bottom. And these guys are cross reading. So if this tight end comes this way, Dylan Moses has got him. If the running back releases this way, number eight's got him, vice versa. Okay, cross reading are those linebackers. Now, very next play. Again, you need to see right here on 32. Very next play is an indication of what they're going to do. This is, another, this is the batted pass and the interception. Okay, but before we get to the batted pass, we're going to address these all night, by the way, guys. Look at what they're doing to Pickens right off the jump. Georgia tried to get him an easy touch. The very next play, they bracket coverage him, right? Tell Sertan, you've got outside leverage with help over the top in the middle. That's why, guys, and I'm going to say it over and over again because I keep getting comments and questions on social media, on YouTube, on Patreon. Why is the Pickens getting the ball? Why is the Pickens getting the ball? Well, that's why Pickens didn't get the ball. They're bracket coveraging him. They're getting away from him immediately. Now, let's talk about the batted passes. Okay, this is the interception, but let's show you on the tight angle what's actually happening. Okay, look, every small quarterback in the world, they the best ones, right, the Russell Wilsons of the world, they know how to find the holes in the offensive line. So right now, this would be a hole in the offensive line in the pass rush, okay? That lane just closed. So if we're trying to throw to Kenny, we have got to, got to slightly move to the left and throw in this window. You've got to throw through the windows if you're five foot ten. Instead, he just throws it right over Trey Hill's head, and it ultimately ends up getting picked off. Watch this next angle. Look at this. This ball, this ball is probably not even going to get over the defensive lineman's head or Trey Hill's head for that matter. In fact, it hits the arm and the helmet of Trey Hill at the same time. Okay, this was something that Alabama clearly emphasized all night long and all practice week leading up to this football game. They got a five foot 10 quarterback. Munkin likes to get the ball over to the middle of the field to open up the outside shots. We're going to get our hands up all day long. Matter of fact, look at the pass rush. The pass rush, 94 almost stops. He does. He stops his pass rush. He said, screw it. I'm going to sit right here and time the jump. Boom. Get up there, get my hand in the, on the ball. Good play by 92, getting his head around and making that play. You got to find the windows if you're this small of a quarterback and offensive lineman. And this is something we're going to be talking about all week during these breakdowns. These two nights we do these offensive breakdowns, again, whenever they are, based off what you guys want, you've got to make these guys pay for jumping like this. What Trey's doing right here, where you're just kind of holding him and keeping him in place, nah, screw that. You've got to put this guy on his back when he decides to jump like this. It's the only way you're going to set the tone and keep it from happening. So the very next series, they come back. They've already got a, a penalty here to put them into four, a first and 20, trying to get to the edge again. Okay, we got to the edge the first two plays of the game. Very next series, we're going to try to get to the edge again. Now, here's the only thing. I don't like number three's angle right here. Watch him. Watch Zamir White. He's the lead blocker on this. Why are we so, <clears throat> excuse me, why are we so tight in our angle right here, number three? Zamir, why aren't we pushing towards the outside shoulder of number seven instead of the inside shoulder? Get outside. That is what we're trying to do. We're trying to capture the edge. Had we taken a slightly better angle, 
I believe we get to the outside shoulder of this corner right here that falls off of Burton. And if we do that, we don't have to stop by Kyrus Jackson right there. You see how it slows momentum down? That's all because the safety or the corner now has outside leverage. They've quote unquote set the edge. Now they did it all the way out there at the bottom of the numbers, but they still managed to set the edge again because I don't like how tight of an angle this is by Zamir. Let's push. Let's get outside. Let's not hug everybody. Let's push to the outside shoulder. And eventually, when they flow over the top, they'll fall right into your block. Again, another big play right here. Th to me, look, everybody wanted to say, you know, we're what? Seven plays in. We're, we get seven plays into Georgia's ga game plan before they actually run a quarter, a legitimate run. Guys, air raid systems, first of all, this is a jet sweep. This goes down in the books as a pass because it's a forward lateral. That's a jet sweep. That's a run. Anybody that's calling that other than the stat book a pass just doesn't know football. So, A, don't listen to them. B, this next play, this is an extension of their run game. This is just an extended handoff is what offensive coordinators in the quote-unquote air raid system would call this. We're going to stop trying to run in the box to open the game. We're going to come out. We're going to try to get to the edge. We're going to make all these guys pursue. And then the next couple of series, we're going to punch them right in the A-gaps, okay? This is what all this is. This is getting three over three and tossing a ball to a ball carrier out in space and letting them pick up six or seven yards. This is an extension of their run game. So anybody that's telling you, oh, they're pass happy, they threw the ball seven times in a row to begin the game, stop. Don't listen to them. They don't know what offensive schemes and offensive identities are. This is a run in my book. It goes down in the stat sheet as a pass, but it's no different than a, you know, 1962 Packers sweep. This is the Air Raids Packers sweep. Getting one, two, three over three, and getting the ball carry the ball out on the edge. Does it get executed like the Packers sweep? No. Is it the modern day toss sweep, extended sweep to the field? A hundred percent. That's an extension of the run game in these offenses. All right, YouTube, that's all I can give you for now. As you know, by now, I hope you guys, I've trained my audience well enough to understand that you're going to get the first 10, 12, maybe 15 minutes of these breakdowns. There's a whole nother 45 minutes to an hour over on the Patreon account of this right here. Um, we'll be doing this all week this week for Alabama versus Georgia. So if you like what you have seen, which I hope that you have, it only gets better and only gets more in depth over there on the Patreon account. That's patreon.com forward slash Brooks Austin. I'll drop the link in the comments down below. Please join us over there, man. We got, you know, well over 300 people at this point. There's a party going on. There's a chat over there where you can ask me even further information, further details. Um, you know, a good bit of community going on over there. One big happy family becoming educated on the game of football and what's winning and what's not winning on Saturday for the Georgia Bulldogs. So if you enjoy it, join us over there. Appreciate you guys. We will see you tomorrow.